Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the leading newsroom for data centers and telecoms professionals. I'm Jean-Marc Slim and joining me today is Tate Cantrell, CTO of Iceland's leading data center provider, Vern Global. Tate, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Jean. Um, for people that don't know you or don't know Vern very well, let us know what's your journey, what's your history, how did you become involved with the data center world and uh, what, what is Vern, what does Vern do? Sure. Well, uh, for me, um, started many years ago, actually. Um, I actually started in a supercomputing lab in Tulane University in New Orleans. Um, I was uh, programming um, my own science. I was doing supercomputing simulations of uh, electromyocardial activity in the heart. Okay. And, um, you know, I was, my whole life was surrounded around these two millimeter by two millimeter patches of tissue. And uh, as an electrical engineer in undergrad, um, I got kind of a, uh, I don't know, a fly uh, that was buzzing me around me and said, I should, I should go see the world a little bit and, and, uh, and also learn a little bit about what more I could do in electrical engineering. So I actually drove up to Alaska, um, got a job in the power engineering industry up there. And then by the time I came back uh, to the lower 48, as we called it up in Alaska, uh, by, the, by the time I came back, I actually settled near Washington, D.C. And that was right about the time that the Internet uh, industry was kicking off. Um, I started working for the group that was designing and building uh, all of the data centers for America Online at the time. Um, you've got mail. Um, so uh, uh, I started working there and and helped a, a company called AboveNet, um, you know, go with their global deployment of, of data centers around the world. Uh, really interesting time. Um, and uh, coming out of the the dot com, we'll call it the dot com bust. Uh, it was a time when, frankly, a lot of people questioned the value of the data center assets. And, and I was actually lucky enough to get involved with the, the start of uh, DuPont Fabros. Uh, at the time, it was DuPont Fabros Development. Uh, they, they brought me in as a partner to develop the operations team uh, and to um, operate and design and, and help to build uh, the, the data centers that they rolled out across the, the U.S., um, they went public. Uh, that company floated in 2007. Um, was at the time, I think it was the seventh largest REIT in, in history. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was pretty exciting. Um, but I kind of wanted to do more. And so I, I knew that, that one of the next challenges for the data center industry was going to be um, energy and specifically power. Um, also, about that time, I was, I was getting my, uh, I, had, I had three boys by then and was starting to think about the legacy I was leaving for them and, and uh, just building data centers everywhere. And so uh, I, I got very interested in Vern Global, which at the time in 2008 was just getting started with their concept of uh, sustainable data centers uh, built in Iceland, which has a 100% renewable energy grid, actually the only one in Europe that's 100% renewable, renewable generation. So, um, so and, and that's really where, where Vern started. And, um, oh, you know, it didn't take us long to find out that we had an important niche to serve in the industry, in the data center industry, which was to bring that sustainable um, capability to high intensity computing. And, and by high intensity computing, I'm not limiting it just to um, high performance computing, which we think of as HPC, but also um, artificial intelligence, AI, um, the training of these models, uh, super important. And, and so uh, what Vern Global has been able to do, it's been able to take the concept of, of Iceland, which was this, you know, I remember hearing about it kind of in the early knots as this place where you could do these amazing things with free cooling, um, sustainable power, um, but uh, no one had gone and done it. And, mm -hmm. and so we, we actually uh, really set up the industry. I mean, it took from 08 until uh, 2011 to get the campus set up and uh, get started. And from there, we've just had fantastic uh, uptake. We've got some really marquee customers uh, in Iceland, BMW, Volkswagen, uh, representing the manufacturing industry. Um, we've got some great financial services customers who, who prefer to be unnamed, but that, that's a large, um, large growth area that we see. Uh, and, um, 
And then companies like uh, that are really leading the edge in artificial intelligence, like DeepL, which is a natural language translation company that does uh, uses artificial intelligence and you know very parallel models to do this. And one of our most recent customers, which is um, a really exciting company called Peptone, and so Peptone is developing what they call the protein engineering operating system, and uh, the, they developed this um, PIOS to handle massively parallel um, molecular simulations that are orchestrated and supervised by reinforcement learning algorithms. So you're getting that kind of, you're, you're getting HPC, this convergence of, of high performance computing uh, and artificial intelligence, which I, I just, I love being at the center of that. Yeah, I mean, it's a whole new world. Um, I remember the first time I heard from you guys, Vern, I think it was 2015. And at the time you had signed something around smart cars or driverless cars. Um, so you're quite involved in a lot of different things and then came blockchain and everything else. But um, how would you describe the data center market in Iceland today? And um, how do you kind of connect into the other continents? So North America and Europe, because um, you kind of this bridge in the middle of the Atlantic connecting both continents. Um, sure. So what's yeah. the state of the, the so, plate? So I'd say, I'd say the status right now is, um, you know, obviously very well served um, for the local population. There's there's a, a number of small data center companies and, and Vern. Um, that's serving primarily the enterprise inter, in international enterprise market. We were set up um, specifically for that. Um, and since we were that international connection, international company, um, all of the, the high-speed undersea cable systems terminate at, at Vern, as, as you would expect. And so in a way, we are, we are really the center of enterprise computing in Iceland. Um, and, and so, you know, just for those who don't understand how Iceland's connected with the rest of the world, I mean, first of all, we're in a, in a strategic location, uh, right in the mid Atlantic. So we're, we're connected back to, um, the U S, uh, via a cable system called tele Greenland. And then we're connected, um, back towards your Europe, um, with, uh, two systems, one terminating in Scotland and another terminating in Denmark. And, and these are really modern, you know, 100 gig wave, uh, you know, or, you know, in some cases, uh, dark fiber, which is very uncommon to be able to obtain in an undersea system. Um, so so yeah, fantastic connectivity back to Europe. And, and really, we, we knew this was a prerequisite to be able to set up really a data center industry. And so what I really like about what, what we've been able to do in Iceland is we've been able to establish a, a, an ecosystem so that regardless of the type of computing that someone is choosing to do, how they want to operate it, how they want to support it, whether it be through cl cloud, through bare metal, um, through individual servers, um, there's an entire ecosystem ecosystem that's been set up to be able to support that. And, and while we're talking about connectivity, I'll, I'll just go ahead and mention that um, there's a, a new cable system called Iris, uh, which has been fully funded and uh, should be coming online uh, sometime next year. And that is going to be a, a, a new cable system connecting us directly to Dublin. And, and that, that's really going to be interesting because, you know, we are the furthest west uh, Nordic country and with a direct connection down to Dublin, you can just imagine how we're going to be able to short circuit, um, uh, you know, the, to the east coast of the U.S. And, and, and also the connectivity down to, you know, what has become, you know, just a, a real center, uh, a hub for a hyperscale uh, cloud type computing. So, so we're, we're really excited about that. Um, we believe that the, you know, the growth that we're seeing, you know, with our financial service companies and, and other um, high performance, high intensity computing uh, users, um, we think that that will pair very nicely with direct access to the cloud over that Iris cable. Actually, I was going to ask you on the back of uh, what you just said about the Iris cable, um, if we can expect to see a lot of um, press releases and news coming out of Fern um, around working with the hyperscalers, so with the Googles and Facebooks of the world, because if you're going to Ireland, I guess that's probably the main business drive behind it. Or? Well, I mean, so, you know, the, the, the expansion of undersea cable systems really, you know, we've seen that that has been driven by hyperscale demand. So, you know, I, I wouldn't, uh, you know, I wouldn't, comment specifically on any direct relationships that we might have with, with the hyperscale community. 
Um, but for us, you know, we're just super excited to give our customers the option to be able to choose how they do computing because, you know, specifically on the HPC side of things, our customers at least have seen that, you know, while you can, you know, get, cloud is fantastic at starting up with a new idea and being able to flexibly work, decide which tool sets you're going to uh, choose to work with and to be able to experiment with, with new ideas. Um, it can become cumbersome once you're looking to scale. And, um, and I, look, the cloud folks know this, right? I mean, that's, that's the stickiness. They, they get people in with the new ideas and sure, if you want to stay in that ecosystem, um, you can, uh, you can be nimble. Um, but if you decide how your workflow is going to work, and you know we deal with some of the largest companies in the world, um, they establish workflows and then they look to optimize those and, and really wring all the fat out of them. And when we're, you know, I, I know specifically one of our financial services companies said that we're, um, they, they, you know, they put kind of an RFP of sorts to model what we're doing with them. And it was over 5x the cost to put it in the cloud. So, which I, I don't think really should surprise anyone. And it's why I think co-location specifically as it relates to high intensity computing will be very important uh, in the years to come. I mean, we see the HPC markets growing, uh, forecast to grow. Um, Intersect 360 said it should grow to 55 billion uh, USD by 2024. And I mean, the AI markets, you know, well, well over double that. Yeah. And we are just the beginning, at uh, the beginning of, of it all. Um, but now that we've gone through the footprint, the customers, uh, the connectivity scheme around um, Vern and Iceland, I mean, Iceland is the island of fire and ice. Um, every time I go to a conference and you talk about Iceland, well, I talk about Iceland to some people, some people still come back with, uh, well, they've got volcanoes there. It's not the best place to host your data. What do you have to say to, say to people like that? Um, Cause I mean, obviously there's a business there. You've been there for 15 plus years now um, yep. and the business is going well and there's other clients going in, there's other companies going in. So what do you have to tell people about when they say there's volcanoes in Iceland and you can't build a data center in Iceland because of volcanoes? Sure. Well, I mean, we, purposely went there for a reason, right? You, mm. you said fire and ice, it kind of sums it up nicely, right? It's, it's a great opportunity to be in a location where, you know, there's a hundred percent renewable generation. So that's, that's first off. Um, and with the geothermal opportunity there, you know, there is, you know, I, I don't like the term limitless because there's always a limit to things, but um, there's a very large expansion capacity for us to grow in terms of, you know, with the local providers of power in terms of generation. So we like the scale. And so what I would say to people is um, if you like the ability to scale and you like low cost power, then, then Iceland is, is something that should be on your radar. Yes, there are volcanoes, but I would also counter that um, there are um, there are risks anywhere you put a data center. I I, I mean I've. I've put data centers all over the world and I'm yet to find the place where um, you have zero risks. It just, just doesn't happen. Um, it also just so happens that we decided, uh, you know, this goes back to 2006, which predates me a little bit, but um, you know, just after uh, NATO pulled their flag down and handed the um, handed their campus, uh, you know, their allied command base, they handed that back to Iceland. It wasn't, very long after that, that Vern Global decided that that was an optimal location. And I can tell you that, that NATO did not choose that uh, location out of a whim. Um, we we're actually uh, geologically isolated from uh, other in the areas in Iceland where there, there is volcanic activity. And the, the, the nice thing is, is actually volcanoes are, are not that hard to engineer against. Um, we use uh, cooling systems that um, can can operate uh, completely closed loop, uh, which prevents this. And and I, you know I I fully expect the next few generations of compute we're going to at least in the high intensity computing side, we should be moving over to direct liquid, which even further allows us to isolate that infrastructure. So, um, and I, you know, I should also mention, as you said, you know, we've, we've operated there for, you know, well in excess of a decade and, you know, there've been, you know, four events uh, that, that have been ongoing at the time uh, during that time. And, and we've, we've operated normally, we've never had any impact um, to operations or infrastructure, you know, upstream on campus. So um, it's a great opportunity and, and, uh, and we've been able to, you know, engineer successfully around the concerns that some people might have. But I, I, I should also 
mentioned, uh, you know, our customers are continuing to grow, right? And and that's that's what we see. We you know we we bring value from an operational standpoint. When somebody has an application that they would like to scale out, um, they get comfortable with us and and they grow accordingly. So um, once you become a customer, I, I think um, it's that's that's an easier um, easier question to solve. And I'm sure it's a pretty day center to visit <laughs> with surroundings. It is. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we encourage people to come and have a look. I mean, you know, that, you know, I, we, we, um, we've used to our advantage, uh, so <laughs> the, location. The, the location of Iceland. In fact, uh, you know, interesting story. I mean, Peptone, um, came along with, I think 25 other companies. We had a, we had an artificial intelligence round round table summit, uh, in Iceland that we hosted. This is pre pandemic, but, um, we hosted that, uh, at the blue lagoon and, and, um, um, just had a you know hosted a fantastic set of conversations um, and and they you know Peptone was actually in that group so um, so we we don't mind using Iceland as a draw to get people interested in coming up and and now you know uh, they're they're actually in the position now where thankfully I just got my second shot and and um, I'm looking forward to being able to get back over there again um, you know they're they're done amazingly well at, at uh, you know throughout the COVID pandemic it's a it's a very um, impressive society uh, that Iceland has uh, out there. Yeah, they're, they're very good at containing it. Um, and now in the second phase of vaccinations as well. So maybe I'll join in a few months' time once I get my please my shot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you touched on this um, as we were talking through as well. Um, what are you going to be working on during this year and even into next year? And um, are we ever going to see Vern Global going global, going elsewhere, opening sites elsewhere? Sure. Well, I, I will say for us, it's, it's just about continued expansion. Um, we, you know, we've in the last few years, I mean, we, we more than doubled the amount of infrastructure that we, we had in place and, um, and we're, we're planning on, um, and on a huge increase uh, in this coming year, uh, we should be in excess of 30 megawatts of infrastructure put in place, which is still, um, that's still a small amount compared to our, our total campus capacity. Um, we, we, um, um, I think what you, sh- you should expect to see is a lot of announcements uh, involving um, partnerships, right? I mean, we, we have a very strong relationship uh, that we've developed with NVIDIA. We're now uh, a titanium partner with Dell. Um, and, uh, and we do this because, you know, our, our customers are, you know, for, for some of their industries, it really is, you know, somewhat of an arms race. I mean, you know, the, the new technology and the new advancements that are, are capable with, you know, chips like the, the DGX A100, NVIDIA DGX A100, um, there's just some fantastic things that people can do. And once they get those workflows in place, it's just a matter of, of how much equipment that we can move up. So we're seeing um, huge growth from our customers. Um, and I would say be on the lookout for some interesting um, funding announcements that will really allow us to leverage some relationships um, moving forward, which, you know, could see some significant growth story uh, for Vern in the years to come. Well, you know, I always like a bit of uh, a money story. I like a bit of cash injections. I, I, so. I, I know. And, uh, and you know, I would definitely in, encourage you to have a conversation yeah. with our CEO, Dominic mm-hmm. Ward. Uh, Dominic's really got an interesting story. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he actually led uh, the round for the Welcome Trust. Um, he was heading up their private equity uh, mm-hmm. division at the time. And so they were our first... Uh, let's say large long-term vision shareholder. And, you know, they've, um, and we, we have fantastic investors, you know, they, they, every time there's been uh, you know, a call for, for capital uh, to help us continue to develop um, they've been there. And, uh, and we're now at a point where, you know, we're, we're able to, we've been able to leverage some very interesting uh, debt story. And um, I know Dominic will be really excited to talk to you about that. Yeah. Well, at this point, I would love to see him face to face. Um, yeah, we're getting there. So we're getting there. <laughs> um, uh, but if people want to find out more about Vern and um, if they want to subscribe to maybe um, announcements or alerts your announcements, where can they go um, to find out more? Well, uh, you know, depending on when someone sees this, uh, we, we're just in the final days of, of, of uh, launching a new website, vernglobal.com, that will be focused on um, making sure that our story is matching up with our social media message. You can, of course, always find us on on Twitter, uh, F- Facebook, L- LinkedIn is probably, you know, uh, for, for professionals, probably the best place to do it. And then, you know, also, you know, I, I like to I like to blog and talk about it. So, you know, feel free to hit me directly on social media. I, I'm 
you know, Tate eight tech, the, the number eight, but uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm always happy to interact with people. I think there's just so, there's so many great things that are happening in technology right now. I think the data center has an important um, there. We're of course a por- important part of driving infrastructure forward, but, but I believe that um, we should be and will be an example for other industries in terms of how, um, you take sustainability and and make it an important part of the success of your overall industry. And I, and I think in the years that come, you know, uh, I think we'll all look back and be very happy about these, you know, next 10, 20 years that the data center industry is able to really convert to um, identifying just how important sustainable infrastructure is. Hmm. And, and that's happening right now. I mean, we can't wait on um, 10 years to get the ball going. No. <laughs> okay. Th- th- thanks so much for talking to us. Um, and thank you to our viewers for tuning in to JSA TV and JSA podcasts. And don't forget to check our social media channels as well for more content. Until next time, happy networking. Mm-hmm.